Oh, um, I can say this to my white friends. Don't ever be afraid for somebody to call you racist. If it's racist for you to support a president that makes sure we have the lowest black unemployment, to make sure black babies ain't being killed, to make sure there's money invested in our community, well, tell them you're the best racist ever. I mean, and somebody, please do me a favor. Can somebody tell Donald Trump how to be a racist? Because he's not doing a good job. Yo, Black Lives Matter! Actually, all lives matter. That's racist. Black Lives Matter! One day later. That's racist. All lives matter! There's $24 billion here and there, $500 million there. Some people want to be paid back, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are you have all of this vast wealth? Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa, and when... Ooh, that was an... <laughs> okay. You study today, black culture is trash. Ain't nothing positive about black culture. We're not highlighting spelling bee winners. We don't talk about the newest black business that's doing good. When you go on social media, you look at some of the most trending videos and trending topics. It ain't black empowerment. It ain't uplifting black people. When you look at our movies, we ain't got no black hero. Black culture has black propaganda. Hitler used propaganda to get the Germans to turn on the Jews. We use propaganda for our culture. We propagate pimps, gangsters, killers, womanizers, robbers, Deceit, being unfaithful. We got some propaganda, homie, that's just brainwashing. I am a pastor. I'm a man of faith. I have a profound reverence for life. Well, I want to save your life. I have to respond to this very quick because he told me black lives matter. And if you think about it, Senator, in Atlanta, Georgia, there's more black baby that is aborted than anything. So if black lives matter, why are you not protecting those babies? And instead of aborting those babies, why are you not baptizing those babies? <laughs> The Woman King is a modern-day version of D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation. The 1915 silent film was used to promote racism through its false narratives. The Woman King does the same thing. It lies and misappropriates history, leaving the viewer into thinking that the Dahomey tribe eradicated slavery from within their ranks. They did not. Instead, they continued on with impunity, yet people still make excuses. Some people refuse to put any blame whatsoever on Africa for their huge part in the slave trade. Now, why is that? Black Lives Matter! Oh, did you see the new Candace Owens film on BLM? Nah, man, you a sellout. Oh, you mean BLM raising nearly $80 million, but almost zero money going to the black community? Building several lavish multi-million dollar properties in affluent all-white neighborhoods and investing $13 million in Wall Street? You mean that kind of a sellout? Oh, man, f Black Lives Matter! <laughs> Despite Root's claim that during the heyday of the massive slave trade from West Africa to America, a white man was more likely to develop malaria in Africa than catch slaves. The average life expectancy of a white male in sub-Saharan Africa's interior at the time was less than a year. Men from Europe or the Western Hemisphere arrived on Africa's coast, bought slaves, and fled as quickly as they could. For the slave trade to be possible, they needed massive help from Africans. Because we do not want to be numbers, we will defend the value of the human being. Every single human being, because each of us has unique genetic code that is unrepeatable. And like it or not, that is sacred. We will defend it. We will defend God, country, and family. For those things that disgust people so much, we will do it to defend our freedom. Because we will never be slaves and simple consumers at the mercy of financial speculators. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. Not too long ago, two friends of mine were talking to a Cuban refugee, a businessman who had escaped from Castro. And in the midst of his story, one of my friends turned to the other and said, we don't know how lucky we are. And the Cuban stopped and said, how lucky you are. I had some place to escape to. In that sentence, he told us the entire story. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. This is what Reagan later meant by we are a shining city on a hill.
Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Welcome to a special edition of the Kyle Sugg Show. And I am here with a gentleman who I have got a chance to know for the past year. He's awesome. His name is Ethan. We're going to bring him in here. And he's got a fantastic channel. I'm letting him tell you everything about him right now. So let's bring Ethan in. Right now, his name is Ethan Winstanley. He is in the UK right now. I'm, on the, I'm in America. He's in, I believe he's in London or near London. So let's bring him in here and let's uh, have a chat. Hello. Thanks for having me on, Carl. Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. <laughs> I can, I'm can. i starting to feel I've just had a huge fish and chips meal after fasting the whole day and I've started to feel it now. But yeah, I am doing very well. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I, I, know, I know yourself and I, we've been talking a little bit. And we've been talking about doing this at a more formal level. And I, I do want to just make an announcement in case you guys didn't know. Ethan and I have been talking. We've done some stuff in the past. Not really thing on, on Rumble and maybe a, a stream on YouTube behind uh, our paywall. But we're actually bringing Ethan in uh, for a actual contributor role with the conservative take. Here it is right there. And uh, with that note, I'm going to use this, Ethan, to segue into you and what you're doing and let the audience know. I know you have a big following now on YouTube, but my audience may not know who you are. I just briefly talk about uh, who you are and what you're trying to do and why people are coming to hear what you have to say. Yeah, so I am a uh, political commentator and I'm basically just talking about uh, issues in England. I first started off talking about uh, general uh, politics, but I'm more focusing now on uh, British politics and what's going on in Britain because um, we've got a serious crisis. Immigration is the main thing I focus on because that is is really the most pressing issue. Um, we we basically have no borders. We are letting in. We've we've let in millions of people in the well, not millions, but I think around hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people in the last couple of decades, but. Our country really can't take it, and crime is going up, rapes are going up, we've got these grooming gangs, um, we've got ethnic tensions. It is a huge issue, and especially the North is suffering, and that's, that's the reason why so many people uh, watch my videos, because it is a real issue, and that's um, really what I'm focusing on at the moment. I sort of, um, my videos that have gotten good views have all been on immigration, so really right now I'm mainly focusing on uh, immigration uh, into England and Britain. It's funny you mentioned immigration because uh, I'm a Trump guy. I've been supporting Trump for the past four years, and, and, and actually six years. And one of the reasons why Trump was so popular was because of the policy of immigration and people coming across our southern border, particularly coming across there, and changing our culture um, in a way that is not um, what American Western culture is about. And this, this actual this live stream is about Western culture. And I don't want it to be misconstrued as it being, okay, well, we're, we're saying something that we only we want a certain ethnicity to be prominent. No, Western culture goes beyond race and skin color. It goes into values, Christian values. It goes into morals. And I think every country should have the right to form their own particular culture. And to that end, Ethan, would you agree with that? And number two, what makes culture so important? Yeah, that's actually that. Uh, just remind me. That's what I really don't get about ethno nationalists, people who just want the nation to be predominantly white, um, because they say they would rather a lot of these people would rather have a nation that is filled with white people, even if all those white people have the worst culture and have uh, really unconservative values. Um, that question always seems to stump like those ethno-nationalist types. Would you rather a bunch of based black people come and, and live in your country or a, uh, like a, a bunch of white liberals? And uh, they seem to struggle with that one. So yeah, a, a culture is really important because it's very important to have shared values. When you, What's happening in the UK right now is we're letting in all of these people with very different values to us. And for example, Muslims. And you, you really can't understand where they're coming from unless you are a Muslim. And it creates a lot of tension because our worldviews are just so different. In British people are a lot, we value freedom a lot more. And we're letting, we're letting all of these people come to our country who don't like freedom. They actually think freedom is a, a dangerous thing. And I understand the problem with liberalism. And we are suffering right now from this sort of extreme uh, libertarian thinking. But they're very top down. Uh, a lot of uh, Muslims. And that is a problem because when your values are so different and you've got all these different cultures, it creates tension. And that's why it's important to have uh, just overall one sort of culture that, that the nation uh, has. It's important to have a, a national identity, um, which is the sense of, a, of the nation as a cohesive 
as as a cohesive whole. And you don't you don't really have a, a proper nation anymore when it's just filled with everyone with different cultures. It's hard to even identify it as a nation. Um, and there's been studies on this as well, multiculturalism. Um, when you have multiculturalism, it creates ethnic tension. It's it's like a it's a pretty proven fact, and that's why it's important to just sort of have an overall culture of the nation rather than a multicultural nation. Hundred percent. In fact, uh, since a lot of your viewers are um, from the UK, may not understand America and how we look at it. It sounds very similar. We have something called a melting pot, which basically means. You come from different backgrounds, races, religions, creeds, what have you, but then you actually meld into a culture of, of being American. And that's usually, it's loving your country and loving borders, it's, it, it's, it's that thing. And so um, multiculturalism is, is not what this country was founded on. And it sounds like that's not what your country was founded on either. In fact, you're moving towards that. And I agree, it leads segments and it, has sectionalism, sectionalism to the point we have many civil wars across your nation and it becomes really difficult to maintain that. And um, so for yourself, uh, Ethan, let me ask you, by the way, let me just jump into here a little bit here. So everyone here who's on this ch channel here, if you want to have any questions, please pop them into the uh, the chat. We have people uh, streaming on YouTube and also on Rumble and also on Facebook. If you comment there, um, if you let me know you want to put that post on the uh, on the screen, I can. Only, I, only thing I'll say is, if you don't want me to do it, put on there, don't play or put a star by it, and I won't throw it up on the screen. Um, also, as we go on, as we get more people on, I am going to have a giveaway. And I'll talk about that in a little bit later here. We're going to have a little drawing for those of you on. If you are uh, want to be part of that, uh, just um, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what you did when I, when I get started. But anyway, with that being said, Ethan, as I'm jumping around here, um, as far as the UK, historically speaking, when you were, I guess, I guess five years ago, you're a young guy. So tell me what it's like historically for the UK and also what it's like for you growing up prior to the first time you saw a real problem in your country. Well, uh, well, five years ago, I was 12 years old. So I wasn't too uh, yeah, aware was kinda, of what was yeah. going on around me. But yeah, it, it, this is uh, five years ago. It was, it was still bad five years ago. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if I could say his name. I'll call him T. Robinson. I don't know if you've heard of him, but yes. I mean, he, 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 yeah, he rose to prominence uh, way, way further back than five years ago. This, this is a problem that's been brewing for a long time. It gets worse and worse every year as we let more people in. But uh, five years ago, it was just slightly, <laughs> slightly better than it is now. But it was still bad. Um, we still had all of this ethnic tension and mass immigration. This has been going on. Um, I think the real mass immigration started under Tony Blair. I mean, that guy was a tosser. Um, so yeah, it, it's been bad for a long time. Five years ago, it was just not quite as bad as it is now. It gets worse every year. Um, but yeah, it, I, but historically speaking, yeah, we weren't. Um, we haven't been a multicultural nation. This, this people always say, oh, Britain was always diverse, and they make these arguments about um, uh, black kings and stuff. But if you actually look at if you actually look at the writings of the time, there's about a hundred people, hundred black people in London in, in the 1800s. And they try and claim that, that England's always been a, a multicultural, diverse country. It hasn't. That's just, that's just incorrect. Um, it, it's only recently that we've, we've had in the last few decades, this huge influx of people. Wow. Yeah. So um, I, I just put something in the uh, chat there. If you want to be interested in the drawing, uh, type in hashtag win, hashtag win. And what that will do is I see people are entering right now. We have uh, two people have done it. And I, let me just let you know what we're going to be giving away here quickly. And we're going to be giving away a, two books, actually. And the first book we're going to give away is this one here called Original Intent, the Courts and Constitution and the Religious of the, and Religion, basically on how this country was founded, America, that is. And it's by David Barton from Wall Builders. And uh, it tells, it basically breaks the narratives that the left tries to tell us. And another one we're going to give is for your um, London audience, a UK audience. It's called The Black Joke, the true story of the one ship's battle against the slave trade. And a lot of people don't know that, that uh, Britain did lost sailors, lost lives. And to enforce the trade, um, the trade uh, channels or the, the, the trade stream so that people could not be uh, chatteling black Africans across and doing that. So. What, that's part of that as well. But that's not part of the discussion. But I think, Ethan, it's important to know that 
uh, white people have done a lot in this, in this world that are as good, but a lot of things that are, are right too in terms of correcting problems. And your country, not my country, has done the same thing. So, um, in terms of that, in terms of narrative, uh, what's the narrative that you feel as cropping up in the UK about white people in general, Europeans, colonialism, all that kind of stuff, and and how do we how do we combat that on the streets? Mm. Well, yeah, that's interesting. You, you said that. I don't know if you saw the comment. There's just been a comment by a guy called TB who said, uh, growing up, even for for him or her, it was the there was an anti-British slash anti-white uh, sentiment in school or sentiment. I don't know if they meant to say sentiment, um, which is interesting. I don't know how old that person is. Most of my <laughs> most of my audience, I think, is over fifty years old. But it it really has been uh, very anti-British views in school for decades now. Um, I, I I mean, I've had history classes. We didn't go over the British Empire too much, but we were we were taught that the British Empire was the one behind slavery when, well, we, we weren't taught about the Arab slavery, we weren't taught about the fact that there were black tribes who actually, I think I think you made a video on this, was it the Tacoma tribe or something? The black the tribes homie. actually, a lot of them, yeah, the homie tribes, they actually had to round the people up for us to take them off and sell them, so they were, they were complicit in it as well, helping us. I'm not saying it was good, I'm not saying we, we didn't do wrong there, but it, and there was no teachings about all the infrastructure we built in Africa, the fact that we built train lines and, and clocks and schools, uh, there was no teaching about that. What, what I did learn about the British Empire was just the slavery stuff and the fact we started it. So, well, the way to combat that is to actually teach what really happened. And also, you know, focus in on the fact that we, we actually started, um, we actually ended slavery, uh, the British Empire. We fought to end it. We actually had to, um, uh, I think, fight some of these African tribes to stop slavery and we had to we did like a, a blockade of a port i think i've heard you talk about that to to make sure that slavery wasn't wasn't possible it was the british that stopped it and yet you know we actually need to teach about that because that's the thing i i didn't get taught about that yeah i think you lost nineteen thousand lives in that process and it was a trade route so mm. i'm trying to think of the name i couldn't think of the word but routes and uh yeah because the, a lot of people weren't weren't uh, uh, adhering to that and England was the first country really to, to push forth the ending of the slave trade. There's a movie called uh, Amazing Grace. I saw that a, few, uh, a couple of years ago. It's a fantastic story and it's it's very difficult to happen. When it happened, Britain came the first and the United States right around the same time, we ratified at the same time. So um, then the civil war happened and we had to enforce it through blood, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I think that whole narrative right there makes me upset. And one of the reasons why I wanna focus this channel mainly going forward on the slave trade and on uh, just the the craziness of race baiting of CRT, which is critical race theory of the 1619 project, which tells us that white people are inherently racist by design is absolutely ridiculous. And until we can get that fundamental uh, core at, at the base, this whole house of cards will never come down. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, that's another problem. Cause uh, you, you also asked about the anti-white. There is an anti-white sem uh, uh, sen sentiment in the UK. Um, especially in schools, this sort of, I, I remember a teacher talking about and actually promoting and putting it in a positive way. I'm sure you know about this book, the why I no longer talk to white people about race. I mean, I, I haven't actually read the book myself, but I do know from seeing reviews of it, it is a Marxist book. It pushes critical theory, it pushes CRT. It, it's a divisive book. And it, there, a lot, there is the fact that a lot of teachers actually hold that ideology that's another problem this and it leads to anti-whiteness um so that is a huge problem we need to get crt out of schools i know desantis is doing a good job in florida with just we're just stamping it out because you can't you can't start to fix things unless you get rid of this critical race theory which is an inherently anti-white theory you have to get rid of that uh, absolutely in fact um you know what I, I get comments all the time in my um feed saying what's the point of this video i said the point is what you just said the point is to correct the narrative because if you're basing everything on the fact that white people are a certain way or black people are a certain way all of a sudden everything on top of that is going to be substantiated but but the the, the core issue is wrong the the foundation mm. is wrong and so the foundation is wrong then, then the whole thing collapses, which is why I think we're growing so quickly because I think one of the reasons, because for me, if you say that Africans sold other Africans into slavery, all of a sudden, well, BLT and reparations and CRT aren't that important anymore. You know, it just, well, hold up a second. You mean to tell me I'm going to pay for you even though your ancestors helped slave to? Hold on. That, the whole house of cards crumbles, just like you. Yeah. We, we're just saying, uh, and what you're saying, same thing. If, if, if what you're saying with, you know, the European 
slave trade being ended, you know, helping Africa in these in these in these particular uh, tangible ways, it kind of changes that narrative into a way. Well, why are we blaming Britain or why are we blaming white people in general when we see this? Um, but uh, yeah, that's um. It's really good. So if you guys are just joining, we're having a drawing in the probably have it probably at the top of the hour. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, draw two books, draw for two books. And uh, one's books about um, the slave trade and how the uh, European Navy or the British Navy helped prevent the uh, channeling of black Africans across the uh, various trade routes. And one's on um, the foundation of this country of America, how it was found that why it's not a racist country in general. And so if you want to uh, be, take part in that, type in hashtag win, W-I-N, and it will enter you into the drawing. And then we'll do that drawing here live and you'll see it, the winner as it comes up. Like this guy here, uh, my buddy Ron did it. So just type that in there and you'd be entered in for the drawing. All right. Um, so, uh, Ethan, uh, what, what about today in terms of uh, the UK? So without getting much into the de details, because we are going to be having a second hour on Rumble only, where we're going to say whatever you want to say. We're on YouTube right now and Facebook. And so we're kind of trying to limiting the solution because the solution may be a little bit uh, not uh, mass Google, you know, Facebook friendly in doing so. But but for now, Ethan, right now within the UK, on a typical day, what can a person see who comes to the UK for the first time see downtown London? Oh well, I haven't actually been to London myself much, um, but there are there are still a lot of yeah. There are still a lot of um, <laughs> well, I'm not going to so I'm not going to say the exact city where I live because <laughs> I've spoken about Islam quite a bit, and I don't really want uh, someone called Abdul knocking at my door with a 13 inch knife just yet. Uh, don't can't quite afford the security to protect myself from that. But yeah, London, London, there are still some nice areas. When I when I've been to London, I've only been to the to the rich areas. And it's it's gotten worse since I've been there because last time I went to London was about four or five years ago. Um and the crime rate keeps going up because of Sadiq Khan, you can blame him for that. Um that guy's an idiot. He likes defunding the police. Um but yeah in London if you go to the most like multicultural areas. Um, there are a lot of areas where uh, you need to be watching your back while walking around. London's a dangerous place. Um, I think there was one thing I saw it was rated the thirteenth most most dangerous city in Europe on uh, on some website. It's yeah, it's got a lot. It's a huge amount of crime. I made videos on this before talking about the crime statistics in London. Uh, it, it gets worse by the day. And why might that be? Well. <laughs> Look at how multicultural London is. It's one of the most, also one of the most multicultural cities in England, and it also just so happens to be a hotbed of crime. Wonder why that is. So yeah, um, <laughs> you should be watching it back if you go to London. I can tell you that in some some areas. Um, yeah, there are some dangerous areas there. So, um, so talk to me about uh, some of your videos that you that you've done. Um, in terms, you said that in immigration is the big issue that's really been driving a lot of your views. Um, Tell us, talk about, to us about the success of your channel. Um, you were also part of another channel you had called The Right Show. Can you can you mm. walk us through that channel and how that grew, and then why you decided to spin off into what you have now? Your your name, Ethan Winstanley, and uh, how long you've been doing that, and how it's grown since since then. Yeah, so I started The Right Show over, I think it was a, a, about a year and a half ago now, um, quite a while ago, and I was quite new to politics then. Um, you can actually look up The Right Show and watch. My, right now, it's still up there. My first interview with Carl, that's how we got to know each other. Um, I contacted you and we had an interview. I was quite new to politics at that time. And I, I didn't really know what I was talking about. And I hardly even talked about immigration, even though it was the worst issue. I, I was mostly just focusing on just wokeness. Um, so I started that a year and a half ago. And I was a British person, but I was weirdly like a big fan of Trump. You could tell I just I just sort of watched a couple of Ben Shapiro videos and then decided I was political. And I made like a I made a Trump edit, which then blew up. And I decided, well, I might as well start making YouTube videos now talking about politics because I've got a couple thousand subscribers from this Trump video. And after a while, I realized, first of all, the videos weren't very good. Uh, you could tell I, I was less knowledgeable. Um, my mic was terrible. My editing wasn't very good. Well, that's not the best now anyway. Um, I, I would only get like 100 views per video. And I thought, well, you know, what's going on here? People aren't watching the videos. They click, they click off. I'm only getting like 100 views per video after like 10 days. Um, I just thought, right, I need to I need to rebrand because I do want I, I always wanted to be a YouTuber. <laughs> I've made I think. I've I've tried to make about ten channels, 
uh, and I've been trying to be a YouTuber for probably like <laughs> seven years now or something, or something crazy like that. Um, so I always wanted to be one. So I thought, right, I'll start up a new channel. I'll rebrand. I'll make it my name, Ethan Wynn Stanley, instead of The Right Show. Um, I'll go, I, I, you can see my branding. If you compare it to The Right Show, my branding is a whole lot better. So I thought I'll rebrand it. We'll make it look nice. Um, I'll put effort into the videos. And and by then, I'd also learned more about politics. I realized what the main issues were in Britain. I wanted a British audience because, I mean, what's American wants to hear a British guy talking about American politics anyway. So I started looking into British issues. Um, you know, I know more now. And uh, I just I made a video on how diversity is destroying England and it blew up. And then, you know, my channel's had a lot of success since then. So that's yeah, that's pretty much how where we've got to. Uh -oh. All right, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll you mute it. Out. Yeah, I want right. to make sure I'm, I'm, I got papers here that I want to make sure that you guys don't hear to, to the camera. So, uh, so anyway, so how many subscribers are you getting now? I mean, I mean, I, right now, our channel just hit 10,000 subscribers, and we had been putting this up there for quite a bit while. This is gonna be the last time we're gonna put it up here because we've already reached the 10,000 milestone. But uh, we were actually um, trying to get to 10,000 subscribers almost for three years, and but right now it looks like you might hit that by next week you think or uh it, it, well it all depends doesn't it because um when a video blows up i can get like 500 subscribers from one video um so it, it, well, it depends if i get really lucky I, I maybe i could reach 10,000 subscribers uh w within the next week uh i would say probably it'll take me a month longer max to get to 10,000 subscribers uh but the, yeah the growth has been fast um because i just again i'm more knowledgeable on on youtube now I'm, i can sort of tell what will get views and what won't but yeah the, gro the growth has been fast i'm hoping it will speed up from here what did the uh what's the country have you looked at the analytics find out what countries are looking at you the most yeah uh the majority is obviously from uh england which is what i want because oh well, i want my fans to be living in the country where i am and living in the country where the, the issues I'm, I'm talking about actually exist. So it's 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 relatable. And I think Ireland is the next, because I made videos on the uh, mass immigration problem in, in, in Southern Ireland, because they're still part of the EU. So they've got the EU's trashy uh, multi, pro-multiculturalism immigration uh, uh, laws. And then America is there. I've got some comments from Americans saying we're facing the same issue, but it, it is something like 80% from uh, England, which is, yeah, which is good, but that's... That's my demographics, yeah. Well, I suspect, Ethan, that you will get a, a, a large audience here in America as well. For the simple fact, we like hearing people with your accent. <laughs> I was essentially saying, you know what, it doesn't matter. You could probably read the phone book and you get subscribers here in America. Um, that's just how we Americans are. We love that accent. So, And I think also the fact that you're young and the fact that you have something, something to say, I think you're really going to be um, a, a power force uh, going forward. So... I, I like the fact that you're getting people in Ireland, getting people um, in in England because that's the, your core. But I think it's going to expand much further for those reasons. So, so yeah. So, uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about um, the, the issues that we. Let's without getting into too much detail. Um, I, I put here. I did a poll, which, by the way, is, is the biggest poll I've done in terms of the 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 worst uh, globalist agenda items. And one of them was immigration. One of them was, was the uh, LGBTQ, um, uh, I guess, uh, influence, I guess. And then one other, other of it was the fact that um, we have uh, Western culture or people actually being told that they can't be from the country that they are, that they must be something else. They must assimilate to something else. And so um, from your standpoint, Ethan, what do you think about the fact that uh, – people are actually not really pushing back on this whole culture thing. And the fact that they're just knocking over and just accepting the fact that way, the way they grew up was not acceptable and was, had must change. Uh, what, what do you think people are doing? Why do you think people are doing that? And why do you think um, uh, they just won't uh, have to fight back? Yeah, it's, well, it's quite a scary thing, isn't it? Because we've got to a point where really, if you want to get real change, um, we really need to get leadership change soon. And we, we need to get out there on the streets and force the politicians to step down. The whole system is changing because all of the politicians are bought and sold. We, we had Keir Starmer, uh, who's the Labour guy, 
he went he went over to Davos, so he's now owned by the World Economic Forum. So he's got the exact same agenda as the Conservatives, because we've all known they've been the party of the WEF. Um, and so Reform UK, I and UKIP. I am actually a member of of UKIP, but I'm not sure if they are radical enough because we really need to uh, change things and change them strongly. Um, because we need to get CRT out of the schools. We need to. You know, start having good education. We need to get. We need to have a, a a cultural push, a strong cultural push to get rid of degeneracy in our culture because our culture is far too degenerate. A lot of radical things have to change. We have to have a lot of fast change as well. It's not something that we can just slowly sort out. And we certainly can't wait until the next general election. That's far too far away because even more damage will be done before then. This is something we need to get sorted out soon. And the reason why people are not willing to 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 actually you know, be radical enough to get that change is because, well, people have got to work, people have got to eat. And really, if, if we wanted to get that change, people would have to be out there and millions of people would have to just refuse to work and just stop complying completely and have some sort of long-term riot where, well, not riot, but, you know, protest. I think, uh, what's his name? Neil Oliver said that, you know, people should just put all their electricity and appliances on and just refuse to pay the bills. You know, you'd have to do something radical like that to get change done. And that's a scary thing, isn't it, to to yes. attempt to do? Yeah, I was, let's go to some of these comments here. Um, TB says here, he says, uh, in every big family, we have an evil uncle. In the empire, there was an evil uncle doing wrong. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, what do you think that means? Um, uh, in every big family, we have an evil uncle. In the empire, there was the evil uncle doing wrong. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Um, what does that mean? Well, there's some some evil person in, in charge of the empire or something i'm gonna guess that um every person i think of jack joe biden um the winning reason why he was able to be in installed in the presidency in america here was because he they were given the perspective of or the perception that he was in uh, like the crazy uncle you know every family's got one of them he's just oh crazy joe he's not gonna he's not gonna hurt you but i think maybe what this guy was saying was that you can't attribute everything on one person, on one king, one queen, one president. I think that's what you're trying to say. Mm. I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Joe Biden is like that creepy uncle. Did, did you see that video of him like full on sniffing at, at some sort of child's back? Like he just shoved his nose into his back and just inhaled. That's the weirdest thing I've seen in oh, I don't know how long. <laughs> He's literally a, it, like that creepy uncle. It, there's a series of videos that, that they people strung together, but and it came out before the election, but no one says, you know, it's, it's, that's one of the things about I said before. It's like, why aren't people not seeing what they're seeing, what we're seeing and doing the opposite or pushing back some way? They're allowing it to happen. And I think that's the most discouraging thing for me um, that I'm saying, not just with not just with this, but also with the pandemic, with uh, with everything. Uh, they know it's wrong, but they accept it. And I don't know if that's the culture or if that's something that's being um, just uh, a psyop that's going on or whatever. But. Since we're still on YouTube, I'm going to keep it a little bit light on that note. But that's that's my thought. What you have any uh, thought on that at all? Yeah, um, uh, we had some sort of connection. I think maybe that was on your end, where the screens went grey for a second. But I think we're good now. Yeah, I, I heard most of that. Yeah. Uh, what, what was it you said again? Because well, you saying, cut out for a second. Okay, what I was saying essentially was that um, there's not people, many people pushing back on on these oh, yes, yeah. and whether it be uh, the pandemic, whether it be uh, Whatever, whatever have, have you, they know it's wrong, but they do it anyway. I was wondering, is, do you think it's because uh, they're lazy or because there's a psyop going on uh, in terms of just misinformation that's being orchestrated at a high level, which I don't want to talk about too much here, but, um, or is it just um, people just being fearful? I think, well, on the conservative side, it's most, it's it, obviously the lack of action is because of fear. Because, well, again, it's a scary thing to want to stand up to the state. The state is a very, very powerful entity you do you know there's the fear of getting arrested i mean in england if you post uh a rainbow swastika you could end up in a jail cell you know making fun of the lgbt authoritarianism um and just the fact that you would end up in jail kind of proves the rainbow swastika's point uh, which is ironic um but there is a fear of that from the conservative side um and then on the liberal side on the on the left it's just pure indoctrination. We know the the entire media is controlled. And I thought when I was looking at the Irish protests, I think this is a very good example of, and also the one, the riots in Liverpool about mass immigration. I think this is a very good example of how that works. Because if you look at BBC and 
uh, all the other media in the UK, when they show the Irish, and also, of course, the Irish media, when they show these protests, they, they show footage where the crowds look much smaller. And if they actually show the full footage, which they don't, it, it would show that there's thousands of people marching down the streets. They don't do stuff like that. And then they demonize them as fringe groups. So you think, well, it's just a small group of like maybe 200, 300 far right people. When in reality, the streets are filled with a thousand people, you know, thou multiple thousands of people. And uh, then, of course, the Liverpool protests, uh, they got violent, but that's actually Antifa's fault because the protests were peaceful until Antifa showed up. But what the British media says is that they're far right violent agitators who were just burning police fans for no reason, which is if they were if they actually had an ounce of journalistic integrity they would have done their research and found out that antifa were the ones who made it violent and they were planning on doing that you can look at the the antifa liverpool uh, posts on on facebook i think it is where they say right anti-fascist action, action we're going to get out there and fight those fascists they made it violent and 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 because that happened then the media just just demonizes the actual protesters uh as far right and they just completely ignore the antifa aspect and the fact that it was their fault so that's that's what the left, you know, then sees all of that people on the left and they, they just, that's what they think. They think it's just a fringe group of far right people who, who would want to resist mass immigration. And in a lot of cases, these people who are pro multiculturalism don't live in multicultural areas. There's a reason why uh, Mr. T Robinson comes from Luton, Luton and not some, you know, some rich 90% white neighborhood or hundred percent white neighborhood because he had to grow up and live with this, with the effects of, of multiculturalism and radical Islam. And a, a lot of the reason is because the, these leftists who are, who are middle, upper middle class, middle class are disconnected from the reality of what's going on. And then when they actually turn the TVs on to become educated, they actually end up getting indoctrinated. So they never actually discover the truth. Wow. Yeah. That's, um, that's pretty, that's pretty scary. I think, I think the fact that, uh, that the people can be just tricked into that. And the fact that they do use some sort of um, propaganda in showing the crowds being smaller and then, then labeling these small crowds as being fringe. I think you posted a picture on your community tab. I wish I had it up here in front of me, but it was basically showing the actual people who are actually the ones. And there was babies, you know, women and children. Um, and so, you know, that, that kind of thing is really frustrating. And it makes you think at some point in time, you, know, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but sometimes you got to think this is almost, it's got to be intentional. And that's what uh, is really, to me, is the most uh, uh, egregious, you know? And in fact, and I'll jump off a little tangent here. Here in America, we have a change of our, of our, our, our house of representatives. And so in America, we have um, a, a Congress, which is split. One half is a uh, representation of the population. The other half is representation of each state, which is two senators per state. So anyway, we had a flip in that particular house and now we have Republicans leading the charge. And if you are in charge of the house in America, you have the rights to um, set your policy and your procedures and investigations and impeachment, and all that good stuff. So they were having hearings about big tech recently. And um, part of that was dealing with the oversight <clears throat> that was lacking in Twitter to um, go against conservatives and how they were banning conservatives and how it's been in legislative record, it's 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 it was, it's without doubt now happening and happened, and now um, where they intentionally targeted conservatives um, and then got away with it essentially. So, in Europe or in where you live in your country, um, Britain, what type of uh, things do you have in place to prevent a sort of congressional overreach when it comes to engaging with the private sector to? influence the masses i don't think we do because we had a similar problem where we in covid it's actually been found out that this i think it's the 70 77th brigade which is uh, a part of the army was in actively monitoring and i think even contacting social media platforms to get people banned actively monitoring people who even questioned lockdown and there were people like peter hitchens who were being monitored by the army so really there there is actually no limit on on what they can do uh I, I mean they couldn't set up factories and start genociding us just yet but you know 
uh, there needs to be a uh, there is no no safety mechanism in place is what i'm saying we we don't have a safety mechanism they they the european court of human rights they say oh we're in that that's terrible um just the mere fact that we're in that and you can still get arrested for for hate speech so just offensive speech which someone else deems to be a offensive subjectively the fact you can get arrested for that just proves that the european court of human rights is just bollocks and <laughs> the european court of human rights also prevents us from truly sorting out mass immigration and deporting people they make it very hard to deport people and we had this sort of delay with the R rwanda flights um and that's thanks to to things like that so really yeah we don't we don't have uh, good limits and there needs to be some sort of uh proper constitution drawn up which you know lines out puts out our rights and uh, prevents the government from overstepping that so we're in a, a pretty similar situation to the us um except in a lot of areas worse i would say well you say worse in some ways and i don't want to be totally down uh, d depressing here to my people here in america and I, as older the older i get the more cynical i get and on the surface, America seems to have all these checks and balances. Oh, sure, you know, the Congress can do this, but then the president can do this, and then the Congress can override the president, and then you have, then you, have um, you know, the states can do this, but then you can have the federal government can do that. There's always a check against something else. The Supreme Court can do something else, but then the Congress can check the Supreme Court. But at the end of the day, um, what we're finding here in America is there is none of that. It's on, it's, on, it's on paper, but it's not being enforced. And so what you guys have is a hard reality that it, that it probably won't change. We have a false reality that it might change. <laughs> so no. I don't know which is worse, you know? Um, and, and that's kind of depressing to say that, however. Um, but uh, you mentioned Tony Blair. Let me get into him a little bit because uh, at the time I was a pro Tony Blair guy. I was also a pro Bush guy, W guy. Um, I was very much into the Republican Party for the very early beginnings. I, was, I would be considered a globalist back then. I didn't know any better. I would just look. I just thought the Democrats were just the worst thing ever, which I still think they're the worst thing ever. Um, but I realized that there's a party within the Republican Party, our Conservative Party, that is still part of that Democrat Party. So, um, talk to me about Tony Blair because where was I wrong about him back in 2004, maybe before that? What 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 was he doing that uh, I should have been concerned about back then? Well, Blair, he's a very suspicious guy. Um, and just the fact that he was at the latest davos world economic forum conference should to anyone who doesn't know a thing about tony blair and i'm not you know i don't know a huge amount about him but i do know he was the one that started this uncontrolled mass immigration his immigration policy was terrible um he just let all these people in uh the guy is somehow worth hundreds of millions he's an extremely rich guy and it's quite sh there's there's shady circumstances to how he got that money he was on the he's he's on the Epstein he's on the Epstein list he's he was on the Epstein jet there's proof of that um so he's he's up there with the elites so he, uh, and why on earth would he be at Davos uh that's the really interesting thing the fact that he's still giving speeches at the WEF and he said he was talking about some sort of uh, way of monitoring people again just more totalitarianism um it, yeah he, there's some odd circumstances around him he's clearly one of the elites he's he's an elitist he's in with these these top globalists he's worth hundreds of millions um and he was not put there to serve the people he was put there to start this globalist agenda um of er eroding our national identity and his immigration policy reflected that because he just let hundreds of thousands of people just stream into our country one thing I did enjoy about Tony Blair was more of a superficial thing was when he was dealing with parliament and he would just take him down using his, his he was a really good speaker. And uh, I, he, I did enjoy watching those those sessions in parliament. Um, but that's kind of disheartening, but, but it fits right in. It fits right in with everything else we're seeing. We're seeing a swamp or a, a, a section of Congress or government that is unelected and then, the, and then they're nefarious in their objectives in terms of them trying to uh, obfuscate or try to override the will of the people. And that's what's happening. You have these oligarchs that are really controlling a lot of these things. And I think a lot of Americans are coming to grips with this now after the frustration that what happened in past election cycles. I can't talk about it here on Facebook, on, on YouTube or Facebook, um, but uh, you know what I mean? And now people are saying, you know what? My, my whole worldview is, uh, of this country has changed, although the foundations are still there to make things better. And on that note, I have this hashtag up here, guys. If you want to type hashtag win we're going to auction off the auction off. we're going to give away um live here on the screen i hit draw and you'll see it 
flip through and they'll actually choose a winner. And after I do that, I'm going to um, uh, send this book out to the winner. And this book, there's two of them actually, we're gonna probably I'm gonna do one for now, we'll see what happens. But the first book I'll give, and maybe I'll give you the choice. I'll tell you what, if you win, you, you, it's your choice of which book you want, how about that? Uh, the first book would be, it's called Original Intent. It's by uh, David Barton of Wall Builders. It's the courts, the constitution and the religion. And that's about this country and how it's foundational in terms of uh, our framework, in terms of uh, individual rights created by God, Christianity, the Bible, all that stuff that you don't hear about in school. And the other book would be this one here called The Black Joke, The True Story of One Ship's Battle Against the Slave Trade. It's about the UK Navy. This particular uh, boat uh, was the best one in terms of freeing Black Africans from bondage. So. We'll do that in about 10 minutes here. And if you want to enter into that drawing, go ahead and do the hashtag um, win. And uh, we'll do that in a few minutes. So, um, Ethan, uh, so also talk to me a little bit about um, about uh, what your aspirations are for your channel. Do you do you want to expand or do you want to make a more single uh, entity yourself? Um, do you have any other ideas that you're willing to say at this moment in terms of um, uh, influence that you have on social media? Yeah. So I always want to be independent. If some, you know, big organization approaches me, like, I don't know, some British version of the Daily Wire, and they say, you want you be part of us, here's a contract, I'd say, no, I'm not doing that. I want to be as independent as possible, only really answerable to myself. And of course, maybe the platforms that I'm on. And eventually I want to try and build up uh some sort of uh way of having a site where i can just be fully uncensored and i've got i'm able to do live streams on there and uh, i've got all of that but i don't want to have some big corporate organization i don't want to work for for that like um uh, i'm very sympathetic of stephen crowder's uh views with the the whole daily one I'm, I'm, my fans probably don't know about this but uh, i'm very sympathetic to to his viewpoint uh, with the whole daily wire thing um I, I want to remain independent. And of, of course, I want to expand my audience. At some point, I'm, I want to try and move to uh, the US, maybe probably the US, uh, because you, you you have free speech. It's a lot safer there. Um, once I'm able to afford it, I'm going to look into uh, getting a green card there uh, because the, the UK is a dangerous place. And people like me, if the UK government gets fed up with you, especially since I'm talking about the immigration issue, less about LGBT degeneracy, although I will also be talking about that uh, more, you can very quickly become an enemy of the state, especially when you start doing on the ground stuff. I want to start doing that as well. And that, that that's where it gets dangerous because the UK, it, it's a lot, they mess you around a lot more, the government. I'm not, I, I don't think it's quite the same in the US. It's got a lot more freedom. I mean, the fact that someone like uh, Fuentes is <laughs> is uh, really going around free. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, you know what happens to T. Robinson, I think. Um, yes, I, I don't do. know if you do. Yeah, I, do. Became an enemy yeah. The state. I, I don't want that. Yeah, I, I really don't want that. So although I'm going to be doing different things to him, I'm not. Uh, you know, he, he's a bit more of an aggressive guy. He was, uh, he made some mistakes. He punched some people that he shouldn't have. So he did get himself in trouble. But really, the UK government tried as hard as possible to to destroy his life. I, I, I don't want that. So obviously, I was, I'll still be speaking to my British audience. I post my videos at, at times, which is, is good for them. Um, uh, but I would start trying to appeal to American audience as well when I move to the US. But I think at some point, I do hope to do that. And that's, you know, really the only ideas I've got in mind at the moment. Okay, cool. So um, that's awesome. So I think what I'm going to do now at this point, I'm going to um, go through some of these comments here and I'm just recognize people who are actually on the stream here, who've been on the stream. Uh, actually, we had a new member actually uh, come on board. Uh, I'll put him up on the screen here. Uh, Kelly, with, this is actually before the live stream happened. This is like he joined uh, us as a paid member two days ago. So thank you, Kelly, for coming on board. And actually, I've added him to our banners here at the bottom. So just for those of you who actually are members on the Conservative Take as a YouTube member, you get other benefits. This is a video you can check out for yourself. But these are people who support us, and I appreciate all that love and support. So, uh, Kelly, thank you so much for uh, for helping us out there and supporting us. And let's go over to these comments here. So um, Billy, Lyon, or, or Billy Lyon, I believe, um, uh, Britchelin Chap, my buddy Ron uh, Roby, I've known him for a long time. And by the way, Ron, we need to do a ministry channel for real at some point. We talked about it. Uh, TB, UK, uh, Gerald, Gerald, John Stevens, Nance. I'm sorry, I can't. 
talk to guys. <laughs> Nance Killer. Um, who else we have here? Mark Diblin, Greshein. I'm saying this. I'm killing these names. Jody, and uh, I think that's all we have. And my and my buddy, partner crime Jackie. Um, let's go through a couple of these comments here. It's pretty interesting here. This guy here says, John says, I've spoke to many people of all different ages, and every uh, one of them had never heard of the Barbary slave trade. Um, that's what I'm just now researching now. I, I believe that's the, the 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 Eastern slave trade. I believe that was mainly dealing with um, the uh, Arabs taking slaves up to um, Mediterranean. None of them really went over to America, but they did go over to um, uh, the Middle East, the Ottoman air, the Ottoman area, and Turkey in those areas. Um, so I'm still learning about that. Do you know anything about the Barbary slave trade other than high level? I've heard about the uh, Barbary slave trade before. I think I've even heard. Was that you that I heard talk about that? I've, I've also. I'm not sure if is that got anything to do with the Barbary pirates that would go to the Italian coast? Because I've been to Italy before. I've seen the their their pirate watchtowers there. Was that anything to do with that? My guess, because the only thing I know about the Barbary pirates is what Thomas Jefferson did. He went to war with them to stop that. So I don't know if that's related. It sounds like it could be. Mm. Yeah. That was back um, to, yeah. Uh, So um, Jackie says here, Kisses gave a great speech at Oxford, but had a very bizarre conversation with the Viva Frey, which where he is animally pro-supporting Ukraine against Russia. Uh, kisses, did he say? Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I, uh, I th was that reference to the the guy who was on the? Uh, I think I heard I saw some people talking about trigonometry. Were they? Because I know that the Russian guy on trigonometry. Or maybe that's you know another name for him. I know he'd spoke at the Oxford Union recent recently, and he did a very good speech on on free speech. Is that I, I don't know the person have to clarify. Is that is that how they're talking about? Had a, a bizarre conversation with Viva Frey, adamantly. Yeah, I I don't like uh, I don't like this whole Ukraine war thing. I'm not sure how much you're allowed to say on YouTube. I'm pretty sure. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll say this. Say, we'll, we'll say that. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Uh, I I don't like expensive energy bills, uh, and I don't care how bad it is in one country. It's uh, we don't we don't need to destroy our own country to help help the least democratic country in the whole of Europe, which is arguably just as corrupt as Russia. Uh, not a good place. Uh, I, d I don't know why we're trying to significantly lower our, our standard of living for that country, but I mean, we can talk about this more on Rumble. Okay, you got another subscriber, uh, Mark. And this one here, you may want to answer carefully. <laughs> so how do we move forward? Should we have segregation in England? Countries within countries with mobility, high dense Muslim Indian population. Or keep, maybe we'll say that, we'll say that one too. Uh, <laughs> I will say that for Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, so, okay. So right now we're at the top of the hour just about. We're, we're going to go ahead and um, do the drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add this to the stream. And what I'm going to do, Ethan, you tell me. Uh, and by the way, I, got, I, got, I failed to mention this, but if you were to give any money here, it would go to Ethan. So, uh, and uh, just so you guys know, if you want to give a, um, I guess there's, um, I guess you can do, on YouTube, you can do uh, what they call, um, I forget the term for it, but you can basically, um, send money and it, that money will go to Ethan. Um, so that would be great if you want to do that. Um, so, but for now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this drawing, but Ethan, let me ask you a question. Should I give two drawings or should I just give the first one and let them choose which book they want? What do you think? Um, we could do the first one and then let them choose. I think we'll, we'll do that. You could, and uh, the, we, yeah, yeah. And then if we do it again, we'll just give that book to whomever. Yeah. Won. Yeah. Cause it's always nice being able to choose. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, let me give a, a quick countdown here. You have, um, I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to go ahead and add your entry into it. So if you just hashtag win, I'll give you 20 seconds from this point in time right now as I go through this stuff. Some good comments here, Ethan. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Uh, one of the ones about a certain substance, which is uh, placed into your blood. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess we could. <laughs> we, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that's the Rumble one. We'll, we'll yeah. have to cover that on Rumble. That's uh, YouTube is very. Yeah, very, we may are still we, very we may censorious. Be, we may already been taken down as it is. Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. So here I go. 
Uh, we have seven entries. I'm going to hit the, the, uh, the button here. I've never done this before. This is the first time, so let's see what happens. Of course, if I win, I'll have to take it off. Oh. All right, Billion. So let's see. I got a little breakout here. So congratulations to Billy Lion. And let me, I got this just for the winner. If I can if I get it. Here we go. We have a winner. Awesome. <laughs> so, Billy, what you can do, um, you can do one of two things. You can um, send me a private message here. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, you can't. Or send an email to uh, to um, Kyle at the conservative take dot com. Kyle at the conservative take dot com, or on or even on um, YouTube, you can send an email there. If you go to the YouTube channel on the about page, our email address is there, and uh, we'll let you know how to get that to you. Because if you want to do a PO box, we can do that as well. So I don't care; it's going to come from Amazon. It doesn't matter. Um, so congratulations there. And right now we have about 10 minutes left going on with the session. And at that time, we're going to actually jump over to Rumble. There's a link in the description how to get over there. And from there, we're going to talk for another hour, basically the way we, what we want, and uh, get some of these questions answered in a way that I think is going to be uh, constructive and helpful. Because right now, if you do that on YouTube, you will be taken down. Um, let me see if I have any more comments here. Do you have anything right now that you want to bring up before I... Uh, what was this? Uh, kisses, not kissing. Um, oh yeah, it was about it was about Kongstetten, that guy from uh, Trigonometry. That comment, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen his his comments on on the Ukraine war. I don't know what his position is. I think that guy's even Russian. Um, it's interesting that. Yeah, uh, it, we'll definitely answer that on on Rumble. The Ukraine war. I think YouTube is uh, very careful about that. That's. I think right, that, so are there me, any other comments we could answer on on here? Um, I don't know who this guy is. Saint George. What's this? Um, Saint, right, it's on Saint the George's flag is banned. What? What on YouTube? What does that mean? Uh, that's the the English flag. That you, 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 the flag behind you right now. No, that's British. That's British. British. Flag. Sorry. Uh, no, no, the, the, white, the white flag uh, with the cross. The white and red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, gotcha. That's, uh, gotcha. That's, that's banned on YouTube. Of course it is. Yeah, because I see that as a sign of white supremacy or something. Tosses. Well, let me um, let me say something quickly about those who don't know what's going on with the Stephen Crowder and the Daily Wire. Um, there's actually a few there, and I'll just summarize. Essentially, Stephen Crowder, who um, Mug Club, he's a comedian, conservative. Uh, pundit on YouTube, been doing it for a long time, came out with a video essentially accusing Daily Wire of uh, basically being hypocritical, taking money from YouTube and um, still trying to do the conservative movement, even though YouTube is part of big tech and Google and all that stuff. And at the end of the day, uh, it turned around where Daily Wire had, had their own um, rebuttal, basically saying, look, we're trying to make money. You know, we're trying to do what we have to do. YouTube gives us all this money. And it doesn't mean that we can't work towards away from that, but for now, we're going to keep our business model in place because in order to give money, you have to make money and vice versa. To give contracts out to other, other, other people, we have to have money to do that. And YouTube is one of our biggest fundraisers or, or um, revenue streams. And Crowder was saying, look, you're giving these contracts to these individual uh, contributors and they're unfair. They're not good contracts. Of course, Candace Owens got into it saying, no, it's a, it's, it's, it got into a big thing. So... <laughs> And mm. it, I don't know where they are now on it, and I, I, I go back and forth on it. Mainly, I stick a little bit with Crowder because fundamentally and theoretically speaking, and um, just from a, a just a core uh, foundational effort, I think he has a, a very good um, point there. I think the way he may have gone about doing it may not have been the best, but we'll see how things shake out. And I, I think the whole thing was just a mess and turned out to be a really, really um overstated but for yourself Ethan I can see why you would not want to be involved in any kind of contract with anybody yeah so. um, I, I just thought we could answer uh, Billy Lyons uh, question the guy that won the book um, I actually know him by the way so I can I can help with the uh, uh, the book thing uh, he said thoughts on political leaders royals supreme leader prime minister president what's best for a country I quite like uh, a liberal monarchy I think the the that in England's monarchy is they're too disconnected. They don't really do anything. Um, and so, well, that's really of no use. They're, 
it's nice having a sort of symbol of the country. It's good for morale. But I, I think the monarchy was was far better and, and more involved, you know, a couple hundred years, ago, maybe 100, 150 years ago uh, in the time of the king. The monarchy was a lot better. I think now, especially with the death of the queen, and now we've got Mr. Globalist Charles, who helped to start the Great Reset. He literally came up with that agenda with Klaus. Uh, really, I, I don't like our current monarchy, and I can't, I can't see it being of any use in the future, and I think they're all compromised. I think the Queen was the last good monarch who who wasn't part of this globalist elite, and she, maybe she even picked up on that, and she wasn't too fond of what was going on, but realised she couldn't really do anything. I don't like Charles at all. I can't stand Charles. Uh, the guy, he, he's actively trying to spread Islam in the UK. Um, again, he's a globalist. Uh, so, yeah, our monarchy right now is terrible, but ideally, yeah, a liberal monarchy I like. I like the idea of. So this guy, Larry, uh, he wants Biden in 2024, which uh, is interesting because Biden actually has his uh, on record as saying that his mentor, it happens to be a Ku Klux Klan Grand Kliegel. So Larry supports uh, Biden for 2024, who has his his, uh, mentor, personal mentor, as a Ku Klux Klan Grand Kliegel. Kliegel. So, all right, so cool. That's there is that. So make sure we, uh, (laughs) so yeah, go Biden. Um, uh, England... Yeah, well, that's you no, know, that's another thing. We had a whole we had a whole show on um, on the Queen and her her passing. I was with Kira Bobby on that one, and I, I sent you a, a letter of, of condolences on that because I was I was shocked at how that affected me. You know, because you know it really affected me a lot because I didn't realize my entire life of all my fifty years plus that uh, she was the Queen of England, and uh, to have that no longer be there was a shocker. You know, it was, it was just shocking to the system. I didn't realize as I was watching a lot of the things that were happening. Um, in fact, let's end on this note here. Let's end on this note here for this particular segment because I think it plays really, really well. Um, and thank you for that uh, statement there, Blues Adventures. Uh, because would you say, would you agree that she was a uh, stable force in terms of Western culture? Because she, that in terms of, um, let me let me ask you, what do you think about that? I mean, I'm trying to put it in a way that makes sense, but I think she was just a st- stable and she was a, a symbol a Western civilization of dignity of our values. Uh, what are your thoughts on on the Queen and her passing, and how could it yeah. be going forward? Yeah, that's what that that's what a similar comments to what Jordan Peterson made. And that's what I think is important about a liberal monarchy. They need to represent the ideal family, and that's what they need to project onto the country. And now we haven't got that at all. I mean, the the monarchy is just. Uh, they are definitely not the ideal family. If you look at Harry and Meghan and what's going on there and our globalist king, um, the queen really was like that. She was constant and she was an example to the nation. And she was also very apolitical. She wouldn't really get involved in politics. Um, she was very good with that. And I think I think that's what the monarchy should be. They should be an example to the country. They should be uh, a constant, some somewhere to look for for hope. Uh, in times of strife uh, and in hard times, and the monarchy right now is is really not somewhere where you can look for for hope. They they're, they look like elitists who uh, genuinely look down and despise uh, the common person. Uh, Charles, I mean, the Charles clearly dis- despises the common person. He he founded the Great Reset. That that is the whole Great Reset is an elitist agenda, and it is made out of feelings of supremacy and dis uh, and a despising of the average normal person the common man um and so yeah i i think the queen really was like that and i agree with you about that she was a constant she was an example to the nation and that's exactly what um what a monarch should be like okay so let me uh, before we end the stream here we're about to end it um there's one thing you need to know because rumble set up it's not directly tied in with Streamyard. the only way you can comment on the screen, now we can't comment anymore on the screen. You're gonna have to go in the comments on the Rumble itself, in the comment section there. And then for that, I'll read them out as they come across, but we won't be allowed to put them on the screen because it's not integrated yet. Hopefully it's in the future they'll integrate it so it'll be just like Facebook and everyone else. So, okay, so we're gonna take a quick break here. Um, I'm gonna drop the stream on YouTube, drop the stream on Facebook. I'm gonna put a, um, how long do you wanna break for uh, Ethan? I need to just I just need to fill up my water and uh quickly take some uh some nutrition pills and then that's it not not too long at all. What you think um 5 or 3 minutes will 5 minutes work for you? Uh, 5 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 minutes will be good, yeah. Okay, great. 
All right, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, coming on here. I hope you can join us over on Rumble. There's actually a link in the description. If if not, I will um, I'll put it in the stream that you'll be able to see it, or I'll put it. And I know it's there, so go go check it out. It's there. Um, and then we'll see you then. And let me see one more comment here before we leave. Hold on a second here. Okay. Cool. All right. It's interesting here, this comment here. Uh, I mean, in the sense of society that becoming a global market, our old way of culture is being eradicated. 100%, I agree with that. I love that dog in the picture, by the way. So with that, guys, uh, we're going to take a break, and we'll see you guys on the other side on Rumble.